Hello, my name is Dan Higginbotham. This is a presentation about signs of the second coming. We learn from the book of Acts that Jesus will come again and that he will do so by coming down from heaven just as he was taken up. Although we usually refer to the second coming as his coming in glory, there are other events that also meet the same description. The Savior and the Father descended in a pillar of light to Joseph Smith in the sacred grove. The Savior will appear at Adam on Diamond. And he will also appear to the Jews escaping from Jerusalem when the Mount of Olives splits in half. We will talk more about Adam on Diamond, the appearance at the Mount of Olives, and the coming in glory. Doctrine and Covenants 45 records words of Jesus to his apostles who had asked him, concerning the signs of my coming in the day when I shall come in my glory in the clouds of heaven. Here are some of the signs that he told them. We will talk about these signs. Seven of the largest earthquakes since 1900 have happened since the year 2000. The NC88 says, after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes and the voice of the waves of the sea heaving themselves beyond their bounds. Here is a list of some of the biggest tsunamis since the time that the NC88 was published. The NC45 talks about signs in the heavens. In my opinion, one of those signs in the heavens was a comet that struck Jupiter in 1994. It had separated into multiple pieces, and when each piece hit the atmosphere of Jupiter, it caused a fireball. When the largest fragment hit, it released energy equivalent to 600 times the nuclear arsenal of the world at that time. As some of the seven plagues in the book of Revelation could be considered to involve asteroids or comets, could this comet hitting Jupiter have been a warning from God about what could happen on Earth? There are at least 190 confirmed asteroid or meteor craters confirmed on the Earth. The largest has a diameter of 300 kilometers, about 200 miles. The crater in the Yucatan is considered by some to have been created by an asteroid that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. The asteroid was somewhere in the range of 11 to 81 kilometers wide. In the Kuiper Belt, a belt of asteroids or comets out beyond Neptune, astronomers believe there are a trillion or more comets. When there is a lunar eclipse, the Earth moves between the Sun and the Moon. Red light is refracted so that the Moon looks blood red. During the Gulf War in 1991, before the Iraqis withdrew from Kuwait, they set oil fields on fire. The smoke was so thick that the sun was darkened. What we normally call falling stars are meteors. This is a list of annual meteor showers. We normally don't pay much attention to these, but they are falling stars. There have been many wars and rumors of wars since the time of the restoration, including wars that involved many nations. In October General Conference of, 20, of 2001, President Gordon B. Hinckley quoted Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, and said it had been fulfilled. It talks about wonders in the heavens and in the earth, the moon as blood and the sun darkened. Many of the same prophecies that the Savior gave in DNC 45 as signs of his coming. Joel 2 also mentions blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. When President Hinckley said this prophecy had been fulfilled, not quite four weeks after the 9-11 attacks, images of the Twin Towers exploding and in flame and smoke were still vivid in our minds. When both towers collapsed, 2,700 people inside lost their lives, one of the bloodiest terror attacks in U.S. history. This prophecy occurs in all five books of scripture, the Old and New Testaments, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. 
Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, was one of the five scriptures quoted by Moroni when he visited Joseph Smith in 1823. Moroni said this prophecy had not been fulfilled, but soon would be. Now a prophet of God, President Hinckley, has taught us that this prophecy has been fulfilled. One might wonder why the events of 9-11 were so important that they were prophesied millennia in advance. In that same general conference, not quite four weeks after 9-11, President Hinckley said that we are seeing the same thing in the present situation, namely a secret organization doing all in its power to woo the people with sophistry and to take control of society. We are taught in the Book of Mormon that there will be secret combinations in the latter days. Of one in particular, Moroni tells us that whoso buildeth it up seeketh to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people. President Ezra Taft Benson and President Boyd K. Packer were very clear that this prophecy applies to today. This scripture in 1 Nephi says that nations belong to the mother of abominations, which is the great abominable church. So the great and abominable church must be at least partly political. DNC 45 talks about the times of the Gentiles. It is clear from verse 28 that the times of the Gentiles refers to a time when the Gentiles will have the fullness of the gospel. So the times of the Gentiles came in with Joseph Smith and the restoration of the gospel. One of the signs already mentioned in DNC 45 was that the remnant would be gathered to this place. Since Jesus was talking to his disciples, this place referred to Jerusalem. It was after the dedicatory prayer of the Kirtland Temple, in which Joseph Smith prayed that Jerusalem would be redeemed, that Jews started to return to Israel. Israel became a nation in 1948, but Jerusalem was first officially recognized by the United States as the capital of Israel in 2017. DNC 45 also talks about when the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Fulfilled means completed. The times of the Gentiles will be completed when the Gentiles reject the gospel. We see many rejecting the teachings of the Bible and the Book of Mormon today. Evidently a sign that this is happening is that in the generation in which the gospel is being rejected, there will be an overflowing scourge, which is explained in that section as a desolating sickness that will cover the land. It is not certain what that desolating sickness will be. Since it will cover the land, it sounds like it will be a, a pandemic. When the Spanish flu pandemic hit in 1918 and 1919, almost everyone in the United States was still Christian. We have recently experienced another pandemic with COVID-19 and its variants. Can we still say that most Gentiles have not rejected the gospel? A scourge is a whip we see in DNC 5. Why is it desolating sickness is called the scourge? Because like a whip, it will strike time after time. We are told in the book of Revelation that there will be a time when no one will be able to buy or sell except those that have a certain mark in the right hand or their foreheads. Even now, there is talk of embeddable chips that contain medical history, which can be read by machines at a short distance. People could be denied access to certain places based on information encoded in such a chip. We are told in DNC 84, that there will be a scourge on the children of Zion if we do not take the Book of Mormon seriously and not only say, but do according to what God has told us to do. In 3 Nephi 16, there is a prophecy of the Savior himself that when the Gentiles shall sin against the gospel, he will bring the fullness of the gospel from among us, when, not if. And then if the Gentiles don't repent, the remnant will be allowed to go through among us and tread us down. But there is still a chance for the Gentiles if we repent. 
We are called to be the salt of the earth, but if we are not, we will be cast out. The word that stands out to me most in Doctrine and Covenants 76, describing the difference between celestial people and terrestrial people, is the word valiant. It seems that the wicked will go to the celestial kingdom, the valiant will go to the celestial kingdom, and the terrestrial kingdom will be for those who are kind of blah, lukewarm, so-so, which will we be? So, although some of these prophecies in DNC 45 may be fulfilled again or may be fulfilled in different ways, it is possible to say that all of them have been fulfilled except the second coming itself. So, what prophecies have not been fulfilled yet? The phrase, I come quickly, occurs four times in the book of Revelation and ten times in the Doctrine and Covenants. The occurrences in the DNC are almost 200 years old, and those in the book of Revelation are nearly 2,000 years old. Surely, I come quickly doesn't mean I come soon. Perhaps it means that the events preceding his second coming will happen in quick succession. The whole world is now divided up into missions. There are still places where the gospel can't be preached openly like China and some Islamic nations. It is not yet true that every man and woman have heard the fullness of the gospel in their own tongue. Still, there are church members in China. The Book of Mormon is available online in mainland China for just members of the church. And there are congregations of members in some Islamic nations. For example, there is a stake in Saudi Arabia. Church, mem church members must be vigilant in order to keep our freedom. In a worldwide youth fireside, the prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, gave his wife, Wendy Nelson, the privilege of telling a story. They had been in Moscow. She had a meeting with sisters there and listed one by one each of the 12 tribes of Israel, Israel and asked if anyone there had a patriarchal blessing that said they belonged to that tribe. Sisters were there from 11 of the 12 tribes. The next day, President and Sister Nelson flew to Armenia and met someone from the 12th tribe. Telling this story with the prophet's approval in a fireside about gathering Israel, was essentially an announcement by the prophet that after 2739 years of being lost, the 10 tribes are not lost anymore. I looked at the news the next day and there was no mention of this momentous announcement, not even in the Deseret News. We truly live in the latter days. In this quote, Joseph Smith says that a body of the 10 tribes will come to the United States from the north. But before that happens, there will be some major destructions to make room for them. The Book of Mormon was written for our day. The Isaiah chapters in the Book of Mormon pertain to our day. Jewish prophets often describe situations and events in their history as types of situations and events that would occur in the latter days. This one has yet to be fulfilled in the latter days. The Isaiah chapters in 2 Nephi are full of images of captivity. It is done in a positive way, saying the Lord will release the people from captivity. But that means they have been in captivity. And the people who have been in bondage are the house of Israel and the Lord's people who dwell in Zion. The Lord will eventually break off the yoke of his burden and give rest from the hard bondage. As mentioned a few slides ago, Joseph Smith prophesied that the 10 tribes would come to the United States. This seems to be a type from the Old Testament. Joseph in Egypt offered temporal salvation to Jacob or Israel, his father, and to the families of his brothers, the other tribes of Israel. In the last days, members of the church in the United States, most of whom are 
of Ephraim and Manasseh, the sons of Joseph, will likewise host the other tribes when they come to America. Is it possible that Egypt and the prophecies of the Old Testament and the Book of Mormon could be a symbol of the United States in the latter days? One of the coming destructions may be a great earthquake prophesied in the book of Revelation that will move every mountain and island out of their places. We don't know for sure. That hasn't happened yet. But it seems possible that it may be what causes a highway to be cast up in the midst of the great deep. If at least some of the ten tribes are in Russia, there may need to be a connecting land bridge from Asia to North America. It seems likely that we'll, we will need to be prepared for earthquake. Jeremiah says the lost tribes will be a great company coming from the north country. They will come from the north and from the west. Sinim appears to refer to the Chinese with the root the same as in Sino-Soviet. So the 10 tribes in a group appear to be in Asia. The 10 tribes will come from far enough north that there will be ice flowing down in their presence. They will bring forth rich treasures, including their scriptures. Revelation 7 says that 12,000 will be sealed from each of the 12 tribes. Ephraim and Manasseh are mentioned separately, and the tribe of Dan is left out. But since most European members of the church are from Ephraim, and most Hispanic members of the church are from Manasseh, that means that five times as many of those who will be sealed will be from the ten tribes. Those Gentiles who repent will be numbered among the rem remnant of Jacob and will be blessed to assist a remnant of the house of Israel in building the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem will be a city of refuge, the only people that will not be at war. At some point, whether before or after the second coming, the tribes other than the seed of Joseph will return to old Jerusalem. Joseph Smith thought that all of America is Zion. The Lord told Joseph Smith that the new Jerusalem would be built in the western boundaries of Missouri. The Lord commanded a temple to be built, but enemies hindered the church from building it. And the Lord said he accepted the offerings of those who had been commanded to build the city and the temple in Jackson County and said he no longer required that work. There will be a temple built in the Jew Jerusalem, which the Lord calls the land of Zion. All the pure in heart that go into it will see God. We learn from the Doctrine and Covenants that three years prior to his death, Adam called his righteous posterity to a valley called the Valley of Adam on Dion. The Savior appeared to them. Adam prophesied what would happen to his posterity to the latest generation. Adam would vi will visit this place again in the last days. It is an event that was prophesied in, the, in Daniel chapter 7 of the Old Testament. The valley has a gentle slope down to the bottom of the hill known as Spring Hill. The general, the hill itself, if it had seats, could look much like the seats for the Tabernacle Choir and the General Authorities in the Conference Center. The valley itself could sit tens of thousands of people, if not more. The purpose of this meeting will be for Father Adam to prepare his posterity for the second coming. All who have held keys since the time of Adam will report. The Savior will appear and Adam will give his report to the Savior. Joseph Smith taught that the 144,000 who have been sealed, as recorded in the book of Revelation, will be there at Adam on Dion. Elder Bruce R. McConkie of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles taught that men and women will be present. 
Daniel said that a thousand thousands will minister to the Ancient of Days, and 10,000 times 10,000 would stand before him. Elder McConkie suggested that the 10,000 times 10,000, namely 100 million, will be the righteous who have passed on. It has not been long since temple work has been accomplished for 100 million people. Daniel says that after the Son of Man comes down with the clouds of heaven, he will be given dominion and glory so that all people will serve him. Joseph Fielding Smith explained that those assembled will then receive Christ as the King of Kings and the rightful ruler of the earth. It is at Adam on Dion that the Savior will begin his reign on earth. There will also be a temple built in Jerusalem. The prophesied return of the Jews to Israel has already occurred. Waters will come out from under the temple, will flow to the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea will be healed, no longer being lifeless. At some point, there will be two holy men who will prophesy in Jerusalem for three and a half years. Zechariah says they are anointed ones. We learn in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 77, that these two are prophets. Elder McConkie said they will be members of the Council of the Twelve or the First Presidency. These two prophets have power to smite the earth with plagues including changing the weather so that it doesn't rain during the three and a half years of their prophecy. Joseph Smith taught that in the year of the second coming, there will be no rainbow. Obviously, if there is no rain, there will be no rainbow. After the opening of the seventh seal, in the great and dreadful day of the Lord, there will be seven plagues. These are each mentioned twice, once in Revelation chapters 8 and 9, and then again with different details in Revelation 16. Since the two prophets have the power to smite ears with plagues, one might wonder if their relationship to these plagues will be similar to the relationship of Moses and Aaron to the plagues of Egypt in the book of Exodus. The sixth plague will be the Battle of Armageddon. The scriptures speak of a man identified as Gog in the latter day, as the latter day leader of those who oppose Israel in the Battle of Armageddon. In Revelation 19, we are told about a false prophet who deceives the world with what appear to be miracles. Some associate this false prophet with the second beast in Revelation 13, who does wonders and makes fire come down from heaven. The second beast has the power to give life to an image of the first beast. Recent artificial intelligence allows someone with a photo of someone and a recording of their voice to make a video where it appears that that person is giving a speech, saying whatever words one wants him or her to say. This technology is called deep fakes. When the two prophets have testified in Jerusalem for three and a half years and have finished their testimonies, they will be killed. Their bodies will lie in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. People all over the earth will rejoice at their deaths because the two prophets have tormented them. Again, we wonder if these two prophets have something to do with the seven plagues. After those three and a half days, the two prophets will awake and ascend to heaven. Their enemies will behold them. Since people all over the earth have rejoiced at their deaths, apparently people all over the earth will be their enemies. We wonder if, in order for their enemies to behold them, their ascension will be broadcast. We don't know. Then there will be a great earthquake. The Mount of Olives will split in two and create a valley, and many who have survived the earthquake will flee into the new valley. Then the Savior himself will meet those who have fled into this new valley, standing on the Mount of Olives. The Jews will look upon him who has been pierced and ask, what are these wounds in thine hands and in thine feet? 
and he will answer, I am he who was lifted up. I am Jesus that was crucified. I am the son of God. At some point, the grand sign of the son of man will appear in heaven. All people will see it together. Joseph Smith taught that they will say it is a planet or a comet. All the tribes of the earth will mourn. Why would they mourn unless this comet or planet is either going to hit the earth or have a very near miss that will negatively affect the earth in some major way? And then the Savior will appear in the clouds of heaven. His apparel, his apparel will be red, symbolizing blood has been sprinkled on his garments. His voice will be heard saying, I have trodden the wine press alone. His glory will be so great that he will outshine the moon and the sun. The righteous who are alive will be caught up to meet him. Those who have passed away and are worthy of the celestial kingdom will be resurrected and will also be caught up to meet him. This is known as the morning of the first resurrection. Then those who have passed away and are worthy of the terrestrial kingdom will be resurrected. This is called the afternoon of the first resurrection. Thereafter, the spirits of those worthy of the celestial kingdom will come, and also those who are not worthy of any of these three kingdoms. The great and abominable church will be ready to be burned. Those who are alive and are not righteous will be burned as stubble. Every corruptible thing will be consumed, including men and animals of the earth, the skies and the waters. Just as the earth was baptized by water in the days of Noah, at the second coming, the earth will be baptized by fire. But through all of the plagues and destructions, we are promised that the righteous need not fear. We are told that if we are prepared, we shall not fear. That implies that the righteous will be prepared. What do the righteous need to prepare for? To protect, protect our families from evil, to protect our families from natural disasters, to keep our freedom safe, to help gather Israel, to be ready to help build the new Jerusalem, to be present and attend Adam on Diamond when the Savior comes, and to not be burned at his coming. And finally, to be quickened and caught up to meet the Savior when he comes in glory. When we fail to keep the commandments, we give Satan power in our lives. In this day of mass deception, we need to rely on truth as found in the scriptures and the words of the living prophets. We need to spend our time avoiding distractions and serving others always with kindness. It is most important to learn to listen to and obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures give commandments for all peoples in many generations. The prophet and apostles give direction to all people in the world in our time. But to know at any one time exactly what God wants us each as individuals to do, we need to heed the promptings of the Holy Ghost. It takes practice. Promptings come most easily when we are serving other people since God knows exactly what they need. If a thought comes to mind that does not conflict with the teachings of the scriptures or prophets, that will ultimately bless your life with the lives of others in positive ways. Follow the prompting without hesitation. With practice, it becomes more clear which thoughts are promptings of the Holy Ghost. Prophets have taught for many years that we should keep supplies of food and other necessities on hand. Recent sudden shortages during the COVID-19 pandemic have been a reminder. We should have a family plan for our family in case we need to leave suddenly, including a place to meet. Earthquakes have been prophesied, including one that will move every mountain and island. Shelves with breakables should be fortified and water heaters should be anchored. Striving to maintain good health will help us to be ready for whatever surprises may come. In this day of deception, it is important to learn who you can trust. Notice which sources are consistent and give messages in line with the teachings of the church. 
be informed and use the power, the power of the vote. Spend time doing things that have positive lasting consequences and be sure to obey the law. In order to help gather Israel, we should be a friend. Testify when prompted, make specific invitations and be there if the invitation is accepted and then follow up. We should invite those who have passed on by finding their information and doing their temple work. Strengthen the feeble knees and serve and be a good example. Building the New Jerusalem will require people with many different talents. There will be people there of many cultures and languages. Learning another language will help and we must prepare to be unselfish so that we can live the united order. The church is the bride. Meeting at Adam I die on is the event when the savior, the bridegroom, will come to accept his bride. One general authority has taught that all the righteous who are alive at the time of Adam on Diamond will be able to attend. That may be either in person or possibly remotely. That will be such a momentous occasion. It will be worth every effort to be worthy to attend. Not being burned as stubble is a righteous goal. And the scriptures promise that if we pay tithing, we will not be burned at the second coming. In order to meet the Savior in person, either before or at the second coming, we need to become pure in heart and serve the Lord with all our heart, mind, mind and strength. Let us not procrastinate. Jesus Christ will come quickly in the name of he who will come quickly, even Jesus Christ. Amen.